ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrek Gaming Citicom video, we're going to be tackling some AMD rumors concerning both the Polaris rebrand as well as the 16 core Ryzen processor. That's right, yet more information on that's emerged, as well as Intel's 32 core processor. First thing, however, first is going to be the Polaris side of things because it is probably the simplest and the quickest of the news to cover. So, as we're probably aware, Polaris 10 represents the core which is found in the RX 470 and 480. Polaris 11, meanwhile, is found in the 460. With the refresh, this is going to bring it to Polaris 20 and Polaris 21. Now, what's quite interesting about this is there was, of course, reports that we would see Vega 20 as a refresh. Now, supposedly, that will be on a 7nm fabrication node. That's not news, by the way, or new news. It's been, you know, kind of going around the internet for a while. So, it appears that the long-term plans of AMD in the future mesh with the plans they have now. In other words, Polaris 20, 21, and so on will be the rebrands. And in other words, the 2 represents the fact that it's a refresh. Now, what's quite interesting about this is we also have news concerning Polaris 12. Now, we have spotted this in drivers before, but there's been no real information other than it's a new, well, Polaris card, which doesn't really tell us anything, really. It is definitely the RX 500 series, so it's not the 570 or 560, and this is thanks to CompuBench. What we're looking at here is a device with 10 CUs, and we know that each CU houses 64 stream processors, so if you do 10 times 64, well, I think you can probably guess the math. This card is not going to be like a high-end device, as you're probably guessing by now, but you're looking at a GPU that has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and possibly boosting up to about 1300 megahertz. In other words, this GPU is going to be the lower end of the spectrum, but it's still going to put out enough power, probably for light gaming, that type of thing, and we can certainly have a look at the comp the compute performance, excuse me, but unfortunately it's not necessarily indicative of the final performance in games. One small note is that it does label it as GFX 804, and we know that graphics 8 architecture is Polaris, whereas graphics 9, when we start seeing devices of it on CompuBench or whatever, will definitely be uh, Vega. So, uh, let's continue with the rumour mill concerning the AMD CPUs. Now, some rumours popped up yesterday that I reported um, on Overclock 3D. However, other sources have started to emerge on the internet. And now Canard PC has made a tweet. Now, the only reason I'm giving further stock to this, yesterday I was a bit... 50-50 at best on the rumour, to be honest. One of the primary reasons I was really concerned with the rumour was the well, there was no hint on it with any roadmap at all that AMD had, hint, had well shown to the public or had leaked out onto the internet. One reason I was kind of thinking the rumour could be accurate, however, was that AMD are putting their fingers in as many pies as possible. They're actually breaking into houses at this point and stabbing their finger in the pie and then running off. Seriously, like, they are going after every possible market, so for them to essentially be leaving out high-end professionals or possibly people who are looking for a cheap rendering rig, that type of thing, it made absolutely no sense. So I could imagine them going for a 16-core Ryzen. But there were a few other bits and bobs which we're going through in this very video which are still a bit suspect. However, according to Canard PC who has been pretty accurate, by the way, with some Ryzen rumours in the past, so we, they do have a pretty good track record. There are many Ryzen 16-core 32-thread-focused HEDTs, high-end desktop, uh, planned on X399. I just want to repeat that and see if alarm bells ring. X399 in four to six months. Clocks are between 2.4 and 2.8 gigahertz. Two dies on an MCM, four-channel DDR4, Sockets LGA SP3R2, 150 watts-ish. So, a couple of things. First of all, the most obvious is the fact it's got 16 cores, 32 threads, and the fact that these are going to be two separate dies. In other words, you could essentially say, if you wanted to, they're basically two Ryzen 7s smacked together. 
One thing that's a bit odd, however, is that the 4-channel DDR4 uh, support, that kind of makes sense. The bigger one is the X399. So, the issue with the X399 is that it's like, well, wouldn't Intel be just a little bit upset? I mean, AMD's naming scheme, at least so far, has been like X370 or B350. So, in some ways, the naming scheme would, I guess, make some level of sense in that, well, you know, it would have the free in it and an X. But considering that Intel are using, like, the Intel X99, there would be some level of marketplace confusion for A. And for B, I don't know if that name is exactly, well, intellectual property of Intel, but I think they would be a bit pissed. So I, I don't necessarily know if that's, you know, going to be a thing. So this processor ultimately is not going to be a CPU which you're going to be running Doom on, but it is a processor which you're probably going to be seeing as a quite popular alternative for folks who are running like virtual machines or who are doing a lot of 3D rendering work. In other words, this is a case of multiple threads working together to accomplish the task of a single faster thread. Now, once again, we're looking at a release date of, well, between four to six months, at least according to this, and a TDP of about 150 watts. That might ne not necessarily directly translate to heat consumption, however, at a clock speed that is ultimately that slow. I don't think it's going to always interest uh, gamers, but it will, especially if it overclocks fairly well, uh, certainly have quite a number of fans. It's going to be quite interesting to see how the caches work. I'm going to assume that we're going to see very similar to the setup we've got now with four, uh, sorry, eight megabytes per CCX. So we can presume that there will be, well, four CCXs, which would make an awful lot of sense. Another weird thing regarding this rumor is we did hear that AMD supposedly were fixing some stuff with their architecture. That was a rumor from yesterday. And that would translate to better performance with gaming. However, I am suspect with this rumor simply because I don't necessarily feel that A, four months is anywhere close enough for them to have done that considering that Ryzen, the original Zen core, just to clarify, was pretty much up to the wire uh, when they were working on that thing. And so they don't really have that long. It would be essentially giving them like five months to alter the architecture, which would be very fast. And for B... It's like, I don't feel that the architecture of Zen is a problem. I think it's just software, BIOS-related stuff, drivers, software optimization. So, it's like, we'll have to wait, ultimately. Um, but anyway, let's talk about Intel's Skylake Xenon, shall we? Um, which, once again, isn't necessarily a processor which gamers are interested in, but does represent a lot of power. And also represents, well, why competition in the marketplace is good. So the Skylake EP Xenon E5 2699 V5, I mean seriously with those names, is a flagship processor and has 32 cores, 64 threads, and its performance has been leaked onto the internet thanks to a Google Compute Engine benchmark. And we are looking at the performance of a multi-score, multi-core score, excuse me, of just a smidgen, a hair, a jot, under 50,000. And this is with Geekbench 4.0.1 for Linux. Now, a single core score is around 3,500. This is thanks to a fairly meager clock speed of around 2.3 gigahertz standard. But let's just be totally honest here. The multi-core is a crazy score. This is the type of score which is probably about the highest, at least to my knowledge. If you can find better, then feel free to link it in the comments. Or, if you want, show your scores with Geekbench 4. But anyway, Pearly is probably about putting the highest multi-core score that we've seen on any chip so far. Sure, if you want to go like, you know, multi-processor, in other words, physically different CPUs on the same motherboard or what have you, then you can certainly find higher scores, but this is crazy. Now, the reason I find this so interesting is because we had heard that we would see that the documentation uh, and the original reports 
that this processor with um, this version of Skylake was going to max out at 28 cores, at least that's to my knowledge. So it would appear that Intel are feeling the pinch. And essentially, we know that AMD are working on Nepal's. Now, Nepal's is obviously focused primarily on servers and high-end high -end usage, basically, like compute scenarios, that type of thing. And it also will be in one CPU package. So, we can make the logical conclusion that Intel do not want to lose that market, which, well, makes an awful lot of sense. Therefore, they've basically been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and we've come up to this. I believe this is probably a good representation of marketplace dominance. Another person coming in, basically rabbit punching them and saying, hey, we've got this um, product. And the other company who were complacent, basically rushing to try and, well, better their products so they don't become, well, I wouldn't say obsolete, but they don't lose their position in the market. And this is once again the reason I love supporting Microsoft, and I like supporting Sony, and I like supporting NVIDIA, and I like supporting AMD, and I like supporting all the companies, because ultimately, I benefit as a customer. And more to the point, when I'm reviewing a product, I can be happy that, you know, I can actually mention two products. For example, imagine as a reviewer, if I just said, well, yeah, this graphics card's marginally faster than the previous generation of graphics card. It would suck. It would be so boring. No one would be that interested. The only purpose you would have is like, well, okay, is it faster in like the new game to convince me to upgrade? Yay or nay? On the other hand, if you've actually got some level of choice, you can start making some meaningful comparisons and we as customers get things cheaper. For example, we know that Intel are feeling the pinch on the consumer end as well, like for example the 7700K and the 7600K in some cases have had some quite drastic price reduction and now that Intel are facing against Ryzen they're going to start to increase the number of CPU cores available in their products. That's good, that means we as customers basically end up winning. So I say let Intel feel the heat for a bit and then, well, let's see what they produce. And that's ultimately what we have as customers, as our power. You don't have to buy from one company, and in my opinion at least, don't be, you know, blindly obligated to buy. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.